So let me tell you guys now about the first baby that I ever delivered. I was <laughs> I was soaked in a bunch of random fluids today. I, I don't even know what was on me at some point. That's how you become a doctor as far as, as I'm concerned. You gotta, you gotta live it. This is the baby count from my OBGYN rotation. That was easily one of the trickiest exams I've written in medical school so far. Child, you're out on your own, a million miles. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another vlog. It is Saturday morning and unfortunately it is 1.35 in the morning. If I just turn this the right way. Um, I'm up way too late right now, working on projects, studying and just doing a whole bunch of other stuff too. There's a ton of news I gotta share with you guys. It's been great, but I am on my last week uh, of my OBGYN rotation right now. And I'm gonna show you guys it all. Like the, the next three days, I'm on for 36 hours plus uh, over the course of the next three days. So got a 12 hour shift tomorrow on Saturday, or technically today from eight in the morning to eight at night. And Sunday, we're gonna do another eight in the morning to eight at night. And then finally, we're gonna end off uh, the stretch with the Monday, eight at night till eight in the morning. We're gonna be going over delivering babies, what the hospital's been like, studying for the MBME exam. It's been crazy and it's good to see you guys again. Oh, and a couple of you wanted me to start sharing like how I'm feeling as, as I'm showing you what's been going on too. So right now, the start of, of the three day stretch, I feel good. I've been having a ton of fun with this rotation so far. More on that later. Upcoming international conferences coming up that I'm presenting at, a little nervous for that. Um, sleep deprived, yes, times, times 10, it's gonna keep getting worse. But uh, okay, let's get the show on the road. So we just got to the hospital right now. It is 7.45, I start at eight o'clock. And the way it works on labor and delivery is that obviously the section of the hospital is open all the time. There always has to be a doctor in there. So it goes in 12 hour shifts. There's the night shift from eight at night to eight in the morning. And there's the morning shift from eight in the morning to eight at night. And there's always a doctor there. So when you arrive, you go inside, we're gonna get changed. And then we go straight to the doctor that just worked overnight. And we'll do like a handover. They'll give us their pager and they'll let us know all the patients that are currently on the ward, anything that we need to pay special attention to and then once they give us that pager and they transfer over the responsibility will be entirely on us at that point especially once the doctors end up leaving this is like the nicest day we've had in months at this point but uh we'll be inside so we won't really get to see it That is the entire day delivering babies. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you guys now about the first baby that I ever delivered. I put it up on my Instagram story a few days ago and I had a ton of questions about it, but first, let me show you something. This is the baby count from my OBGYN rotation. I don't know if this is weird, but you guys will let me know in the, in the comments below if it is. I thought it'd be a good idea to track just how many deliveries I've been a part of since starting up the rotation. So it's 36 as of today. And for four of them, I actually got to take the lead role in the delivery, um, but one, one was really special. So we'll talk about that. Okay, so first thing you guys gotta know is that babies, especially the newborn babies, they really don't listen well at all. You tell them pregnancy is supposed to be about 40 weeks long, they end up coming out about 36, 38 weeks sometimes. You tell them they're supposed to be coming out head first and they're supposed to be facing the mom's back and then they end up coming out butt first with both their legs bent back over their head. So they, they really just don't listen well. Now for my first ever solo delivery, we had the quietest day ever. There was like nothing going on that day. And I am strictly on labor and delivery right now because all of the outpatient clinics have been closed to us students because of COVID. So I'm there on labor and delivery, quiet day, 
and all of a sudden we had three different babies that decided that they all wanted to show up at the same time. So we had one doctor, the main doctor that I was working with, run into one room that was like the, the most complicated delivery supposedly. Then we had two of the head nurses go into another room and then the doctor had told me to go into one room and just wait. So I went in totally prepared to just kind of wait it out and the baby started coming and everyone started looking at me like, uh, you know, like, do you know what you're doing? What do you got to do? And you just got to stay calm. You do exactly what you were trained to do exactly as the doctor showed you many, many times before. You help keep the mother calm as much as possible. You help make sure that the dad doesn't faint. And then next thing you know, the uh, the doctor came back in and mom was holding the baby and, and I was there all done up and uh, I got an amazing evaluation that day. Anyways, that is the story of the first time that I ever delivered a baby by myself. Now I gotta get back to studying. I, I gotta force myself. I always try and do two hours after I'm done my shift of studying uh, and the days that I'm not working much, much longer. But uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. Hey everyone, we're gonna get back to the vlog in just a quick second, but first we have a big channel announcement. Next Gen MD officially has a channel sponsor. I've gone ahead and partnered with a company called KenHub. And if you've never heard of them before, um, they are the best in the business when it comes to online anatomy resources. Their library of content is so expansive and their illustrations are so simple to follow along with. But my favorite part about it all is that if you tune into like a 30 minute video, for example, a lecture, it's bookmarked and timestamped throughout the entire thing. So if you only have a limited amount of time and you only have to go over one or two different sections, you could just jump right ahead to that content and get the things that you actually actually need to know. I'm really excited to be partnered with them, by the way, if you guys couldn't tell. And from now on, um, if you guys want to check out their premium resources, all you have to do is use the link in the description below. You're going to get 10% off if you want to sign up. So thanks so much to Ken Hub. Thank you to everyone for watching these videos, for liking the videos, for commenting. This big thing is coming. Let's get back to the vlog. All right. Good morning, guys. So welcome to day two of my three day uh, on call shifts here on, on OBGYN. I'm tired right now. I went to sleep last night at 12 o'clock and I was up this morning at 5 45. So this is like a few days in a row now of getting like that five hour, five and a half hours of sleep, but that's what we got coffee for. Right? So, uh, we're going to go in there. Uh, I never go in with, with a bad mindset though. Like I'm having a lot of fun on this rotation. Just the, the tiredness gets you sometimes. All right, guys, just going to check in with you. Uh, one time before I go to sleep, this is, um, you know, this is probably the most tired I've ever been in medical school so far. These, these three days, 12 hours on call, um, these shifts are, are not good. I don't, I don't like them. And then studying in between, I'm not going to get any studying done at all, uh, tonight. I, I think it's probably just more worth it for me to catch up on some sleep, um, wake up probably tomorrow afternoon and then, uh, get ready for the night shift tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I got home from work today, got something to eat, and I took a shower because, uh, okay, we'll talk about this really quick. I was <laughs> I was soaked in a bunch of random fluids today. I, I don't even know what was on me at some points between blood and amniotic fluid and uh, all kinds of other stuff that I don't want to talk about right now here on YouTube. But pro tip, when you guys go to OBGYN, bring some shoes that you don't care much about if you get some, some fluids on them and you got to toss them in the laundry machine. Um, and, and yeah, wear gloves that come up at least as high as like your elbow, if you can. All right, guys, and we're finally here, last day in OB, and uh, it's bittersweet. It's uh, it's it's a night, sh it's a night shift. It's gonna be overnight, and uh, I'm I'm gonna miss it. I think this was really the last month. I feel like I got really, really good at doing this stuff, and the lights are turning off here. Um, and I enjoyed it. It definitely was a rotation that I felt like I could be doing this for a long time, but uh, unfortunately, there's been a few of those so far. Uh, I'm definitely gonna miss it. And I know that I came a long way in this rotation. I felt very comfortable, very competent. And, you know, because today is my last shift, I'm super eager to go in there right now and really kind of just show off, but, but not really show off, but really to myself show off how much I've learned. And it's amazing just how much you're able to learn so quickly when you're in clerkship. 
And I think that's a testament to the style of learning that the clerkship and the hands-on really gives you. And that's how you become a doctor as far as, as I'm concerned. You gotta, you gotta live it. You gotta go and you gotta spend countless hours in the hospital interacting with different people, seeing different things, doing different things. And uh, I'll let you guys know how it goes uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, this transition is going to be really quick, by the way, but it's going to be 12 or 13 hours from me. But I guess uh, we'll be right back. <sighs> Time to go get some sleep. All right, guys, here we are. Last day out before my, my final exam on the rotation. Uh, and I'm nervous. I'm always nervous before these final exams. Tomorrow's exam is going to be two and three quarter hours, so two hours, 45 minutes. It is going to be the MBME style format. Um, so it's the first time that I'm doing something like that. And the pass mark is set to 47%. And I know that sounds pretty easy, but I have a feeling it's really not going to be. Um, for today, I'm studying outside because it's going to be the first time that I'm able to enjoy the nice day like this today. But uh, we're going to be doing eight or 10 hours today i'm um, going over the final two practice mbme exams that you could buy for obgyn they're, they're 20 bucks each by the way and there's four of them but uh, wish me luck guys I'll see you tomorrow Okay, so update. Just finished my first ever MBME exam for OBGYN and uh, I'm frazzled. Like, I, I don't know what other words I'm allowed to use here on YouTube, but that sucked. Like, 110 multiple choice. It was three hours. They don't give you your score back at the end, so now you got to wait to see if you passed. And there were so many questions where I'm just staring at, like, these eight different choices for this one question. And there was, like, three or four that were so similar. It, it was... That was easily one of the trickiest exams I've written in medical school so far. Uh, you only need a 47% to pass though, and I studied my butt off. Like, I was, I was way over prepared for this thing. So, hopefully, everything goes well. Uh, we'll see what happens next week. I know there's definitely a lot of you that have messaged me in the past before saying, how do I always keep it together? How am I always so calm and level-headed? But I'm telling you, the anxiety really does hit. No one's immune from it. And I'm sure everything's going to end up okay because it always does, especially when you put in all that work studying. But I'm going to go ahead and pin a comment with my mark when I find out next week, if any of you are curious as to how I did. But uh, other than that, we're done. That's the end of the rotation. It was great. It, it was great. And I know this video is getting super long, so we're going to wrap up really quickly with the three best parts of OBGYN, in my opinion, and the three worst parts right now. Three best parts coming in at number one is babies. Delivering babies are awesome. Seeing the new babies are amazing and giving them their cute little hats when they're first born. The cute little hospital hats is probably my favorite part of the rotation. And it's a life-changing experience and I really hope all of you get a chance to experience it at some point or the other. My final tally for total deliveries is 41 babies over the course of this entire month. And I'm not sure if that's a lot or a little, but I'm pretty happy with it. You guys let me know if you've done this rotation before or uh, just, just what you think, if that's a lot of babies or not. The second best part is being able to actually do stuff and working with your hands for those of you that are interested. OBGYN, these are some of the most badass surgeons that I've ever met as well. It's not just all uh, labor and delivery. Doing things like C-sections, hysterectomies, there's a whole bunch of different and unique types of surgeries that only the OBGYNs get to do. And then finally, the third best part is that a lot of OBGYNs get to work in both OR time and hospital time, as well as run their own clinic and their own practice as well. So there is that room for flexibility if that's something that you're interested in doing. Now, the three worst parts about the specialty number one in my opinion only is that the call absolutely sucks needing to do three days or four days of back-to-back -back call and this just becomes part of your, your daily life part of what it is to, to be a part of that specialty um, I know that after doing three days of call myself that entire next day that fourth day and even some of the day after I was just kind of tired it, it really isn't good or sustainable in the long term if you are the type of person that does like to break their shifts up a little bit bad part about the specialty number two 
And this is going to be unique for people that don't thrive best under these conditions, but it could be a very high stress situation sometimes, especially when it comes to doing certain surgeries or, or C-sections. And you could have instances of like postpartum hemorrhage where mothers and, and, and fetuses could bleed out fully exsanguinate within a few seconds to minutes. And you need to act very, very quickly. So knowing exactly what to do, when to do it, and having this enormous pressure of people's lives sometimes entirely um, depending on what you're able to do and how you're able to help uh, a big responsibility. And the third worst part about the specialty, just in my opinion only, is that for me, it didn't provide me with enough of that variety that I want out of whatever specialty I end up getting into. And don't get me wrong, there is actually a lot more variety when it comes to OBGYN than a lot of people might originally think. But at the end of the day, you still are getting into a specialty of medicine. You are focusing on a specific population of people, to say the least. And uh, for those of you that are looking for something a little bit more general, a little bit broader scope, you're not going to be able to get that with the specialty. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not bashing the specialty at all. I love this specialty a lot more than I thought that I was. And truthfully, if so happens that I end up in family medicine or emergency medicine, wherever I end up, I'm adding on a little bit of low risk obstetrics in addition to whatever practice I'm doing on the side. That just moves way up the list. It totally caught me off guard, but I loved it. I love the specialty. I'm sure the exam is going to go well. Hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for watching. I know it's longer. I'm going to be incredibly surprised if there's anyone still watching at this point. But uh, I'll timestamp it so you guys can go ahead and jump around if you want to see the, the pros and the cons of the specialty. We'll see you all in the next one. Uh, everyone take it easy.